Two new homebrew buff versions for the Inquisitive Rock's third level ability, Insightful Fighting. A simple version that removes the skill contest requirement, and a flavorful version that takes inspiration from Sherlock Holmes movies, awesome fighting scenes. Let's discuss them. Video structure, Insightful Fighting sucks, with examples. Simple homebrew buff, flavorful homebrew buff. Compare that with Swashbuckler Rock. Sneak Attack is the branded- <coughs> Okay, okay, the intro is over. I can unhype this a little bit now. <laughs> and hide this. Sneak Attack is the bread and butter of a rock in combat. It is the only damage boost that the class provides, and it scales with a rock's level. Because of that, as the rock levels up, it gets increasingly costly not to apply Sneak Attack. Looking at the ability, the most common way to get a Sneak Attack in is to attack an enemy next to an ally. Well, that limits our target choice quite a bit, isn't it? What if we want to attack an important target at the back line of the enemy, and our allies cannot get to it yet or at all? Luckily, Luckily, the Inquisitive Rock gives insightful fighting, where we can make an inside check as a bonus action to apply our sneak attack to any enemy we want. Hold on, hold on. Hello? Say that again? The rock can already hide as a bonus action to give themselves advantage? An advantage enables sneak attack? Huh. Tasha gives steady aim where you can just get advantage? Okay. Okay. Let me just grab Insightful Fighting and put that into the INFERNAL CHARGE CAN! Insightful Fighting requires a bonus action to activate, which is very valuable for your rock. They can dash, disengage, hide, steady aim, especially hide and steady aim because those fill the similar function in applying sneak attack. Heck, they even gives advantage on the attack too. Granted, hiding requires a suitable condition for hiding and a stealth check and Steady Aim requires us to not move during that turn. Let's go over some examples and see how these three options fare against each other. What if we're in an open area with trees to hide behind? Then hiding is the obvious answer, but maybe we still want to use Steady Aim for the guaranteed advantage without a skill check involved. Say we're in an open field with no place to hide, then just stay far away and Steady Aim. What if an enemy approaches us like this? Aha, uh -huh. that's gonna mess with our steady aim because either we stay still and suffer the disadvantage from being distracted by that enemy and cancels out the advantage from steady aim, meaning no sneak attack. Or we move and cannot use steady aim anymore. In this situation, it frees up one of our allied attention to go chase that important enemy in the backline and we could deal with the enemy in front of us instead. Maybe whip our rapier and steady aim again. If we still really need to focus on that important enemy in the backline, I would still wait the option of dashing or disengaging over insightful fighting. I would even consider spending our whole turn double dashing to the Stratosphere here to get away from the melee enemy. Then next turn, we can go back into steady aiming and attacking the backline enemy at advantage. But to give it credit, insightful fighting would potentially have benefit here. If we apply insightful fighting to that important backline enemy and a melee enemy chases us, we can continue disengaging from the melee enemy and attacking the important backline enemy on the same turn. But we are likely only moving 30 feet per turn, that melee enemy can chase right back to us and attack us on its turn. How about close quarter corridors, like in a dungeon? I think that would be a suitable condition to turn a corner and hide, even titled corridors. Well, if running is an option, then dashing and disengaging would do us wonder if running is not really an option just stand your ground and steady aim maybe you kill the enemy before they kill you if we're in a melee situation it kind of depends if we use insightful fighting on an enemy that we're in melee with we can apply sneak attack to our attack opportunity when that enemy tries to get away from us if we use steady aim instead then we can only get advantage and sneak attack on our turn not on the enemy's turn when they try to get away and there are also some edge cases when we want to pursue an enemy and kill that enemy during the pursuit then hiding is likely not useful steady aim is definitely not useful because we want to run after the enemy then insightful fighting is helpful there if an enemy pursues us steady aim definitely not we could still hide but maybe if there's no hiding place then insightful fighting is helpful remember these examples assume that we don't have any allies near the enemy that we try to attack which is not always the case after pondering all of those examples, I think it's safe to say that 7 times out of 10, insightful fighting is not helpful. With that in our minds, this is my simple and straightforward fix for the insightful fighting feature. Remove the inside versus deception contest. Because insightful fighting is so niche, whenever it becomes helpful, just use a bonus action to activate. 
and bam, it's on. No die roll involved. This solution is elegant, simple, easy to use, easy to remember. But if you like me, it's not that satisfying for a subclass feature to be so situational. Here's my more elaborated fix that imposes a certain flavor that I want to see from this subclass. That flavor is taken from the Sherlock Holmes fighting scenes. First, discombobulate. Dazed, discombobulate. Distract target, discombobulate. Block his blind jab, discombobulate. He'll attempt wild haymaker, discombobulate. In summary, discombobulate. That's what I think insightful fighting should be. This whole subclass, the inquisitive rock, it oozes Sherlock Holmes. Yes, I'm the nerd. I read a lot of Sherlock Holmes comics when I was irrelevant. Irrelevant. Here's the flavorful homebrew version of the insightful fighting feature. The color red signifies new changes. We're gonna keep the first part about wisdom insight versus charisma deception here. Then, if you succeed, you gain the following benefits. First bullet point is the original benefit of the feature. You can add half your wisdom modifier to your AC against all attack rolls that creature matches against you and to all saving throws that creature forces you to make. These benefits last for one minute or until you successfully use this feature against a different creature. Let's talk about that defensive buff. I added it first of all because of the flavor. Even the original ability reads an ability to decipher an opponent's tactics and develop a counter to them. And it does not include any boost to our defense. And here it is. Let's get on to mechanics. Half of wisdom modifier to AC and saving throws may look good on paper, but I expect a level 3 inquisitive rock to have at most a plus 3 in the wisdom, which amounts to a plus 1 to AC and saving throws. And a level 10 inquisitive rock could have a plus 4 to wisdom. And even when they increase that to plus 5 wisdom, that's still a plus 2 to AC and saving throws. And the bonus to AC is almost never applicable unless the rock gets into close range, into melee, into danger. You know what's better than a plus 1 or a plus 2 to AC against melee attacks? Use a short bow, be at range, and you have plus infinity to your AC against melee attacks. Because they can never hit you! Why did I buff the AC then? Well, remember the examples we went through earlier? We established that in Insightful fighting is helpful to gain sneak attack on an attack of opportunity if our allies are not near. This happens when the inquisitive rocks run to the enemy's backline to threaten the enemy spellcaster or archer. In those situations, a buff to AC and saving throws are nice. It's basically dueling mode intensifies with a particular important target in the backline. Or should I say, discombobulate intensifies. Now, a plus 1 or plus 2 boost to all saving throws that a particular creature forced the inquisitive rock to make is quite broadly useful and can be used in many situations. Then again, it's only against one creature. We have to pick wisely. In some battles, it's easy to know which one to pick, the big one or the only one. But in some other battles, if there are many enemies, that ability is not very useful. Essentially, what I did with insightful fighting is to make it a little bit better at the melee niche and also gives us a different kind of niche that it can fulfill, which is a saving throw boost. Now it no longer has to compete as much with steady aim or hiding. Here's the bonus section comparing the power of the third level ability from Swashbuckler Rock with the third level ability of our flavorful homebrew version for Inquisitive Rock. Both subclasses give some boon to being in melee, so I think this is a good comparison. The Swashbuckler Rock can isolate an enemy and sneak attack against them without a need for an ally. The homebrew Inquisitive Rock can also do that but needs a bonus action setup and potentially fail to check. But the Inquisitive Rock can also potentially use sneak attack against other creatures, though as we've discussed before, the part about enabling sneak attack in insightful fighting is not that useful when we are outside of melee. The swashbuckler rock doesn't provoke attack of opportunity when they attack someone, so they have their bonus action free to either attack again using two weapon fighting or dash away. The homebrew inquisitive rock doesn't have the quote unquote free disengage ability and have to actually disengage with their bonus action if they want to get out of melee. But they can also stay in melee because they are a little bit more durable with a minor boost to AC and saving throws against a single target that they are focusing. 
Other than that, the swashbuckler also have a bonus from charisma to initiative, which is always useful. The inquisitive rogue ability to use perception or investigation as a bonus action is rarely useful. The insight check to determine whether a creature is lying is useful from time to time. Note that the bonus to our insight check here doesn't apply to our insightful fighting feature, due to the fine wording that this is only applicable to determine whether a creature is lying. From that comparison, we can see that our homebrew version of inquisitive rogue is only slightly ahead of the swashbuckler rogue in the skill department. For combat power, they should be roughly the same. This is my goal for my homebrew, to make player character options at roughly equivalent power level so that when we make a character, we don't have to look too much into the nitty gritty mechanics and the flavor can be at the forefront for the decision making. To tie back to the previous comparison, we can choose between a charismatic son of Baldur's Gate, Captain Jack Sparrow or Sherlock Holmes. Yes, please. We have accomplished two balancing homebrew buff version for the inquisitive rock. The simpler version removes the skill contest for the insightful fighting feature. The more flavorful version gives insightful fighting a defensive buff and incentivizes the subclass to go into melee from time to time to complete the discombobulate I mean the flavor. Click this video for the standard human balancing buff. The one with plus one to all stats, not the one with the feet. The one with the feet is already good. Also, this guy's been watching us the whole time. Do you notice? Know